want you to leave with one number in mind after this presentation. The number is 102, and you're going to know why in a few minutes. Let's see. How does this work? There we go. We've all heard about the issues with the SEC and Coinbase and some of the other things going on with our uh, securities and commodities regulators. Uh, I'm here to tell you that for those people who are afraid of dealing with the United States or uh, having second thoughts of keeping their business in the United States, I am here to tell you that there is a jurisdiction in the United States that not only can accommodate your business, but they want your business. And that jurisdiction is the state of Wyoming. I am an attorney who's uh, licensed in the state of Wyoming. I am uh, part of the Wyoming Blockchain Coalition. I actually help write some of the actually help write some of the banking and secure and uh, lending uh, legislation for the blockchain industry in the state. And I can tell you that the state has taken a lot of time and a lot of effort to roll out the red carpet for the digital asset industry, in particular the mining industry. So you can still rock in America, you just have to do it in Wyoming. We were the first state to enact legislation for digital assets. Uh, we continue to work on those legislative uh, uh, efforts today. And the key concept I want you to remember is that Wyoming is an ecosystem in itself. I tell my clients or prospective clients that Wyoming is the one of the biggest cryptocurrency and digital asset exchanges in the world. Why? Because if you're in the four corners of the state of Wyoming, you can trade with anybody else in the state of Wyoming. That means 500,000 people. That means hundreds of thousands of corporations, including 40,000 block corporations with the name of blockchain or crypto in them. So you already have access to all of these people. And you, wherever you are, whether you're in New York, Florida, Uzbekistan, uh, Canada, you can form a Wyoming LLC just as easily as somebody in Wyoming and become a Wyoming resident and take advantage of all of these favorable laws. Sounds like a good idea. The highlights of the Wyoming legislation, again, intrastate exemptions. This is very important. If you are within the four corners of the state of Wyoming, first of all, there is no property tax on the disposition of anything digital. It is personal property under the state of Wyoming, meaning that the state has to change the Constitution, and that's not going to happen. There are utility token exemptions. Uh, if your tokens are deemed to be utility, generally you are not going to fall into any securities regulation at all, to the extent it even exists. Again, no taxation of digital assets, I mean state tax. Uh, there are provisions that I helped write for uh, lending and the perfection of security interests, meaning that if I want to execute a loan with somebody with crypto, I can perfect an interest in that crypto and actually repo it if they don't pay me and go to a court that actually can do something about it. Uh, one of the things we've enacted this year is Wyoming now has chancery courts, just, uh, just like the ones in Delaware. And uh, this has been done in anticipation of people using Wyoming as a jurisdiction for digital transactions. We have banking and custodial legislation. Banks cannot discriminate generally uh, on clients uh, because they're in crypto or blockchain. And of course, we have uh, SPDI, Special Purpose Depository Institutions, and trust companies. Trust companies are operating right now. The SPDIs are not. But if you wanted to custody your crypto, me, uh, you can do that with a Wyoming trust company. Big deal if you've got a, if, I've heard talk to a lot of people today about their mining operation. They've got a wallet and then they want to distribute stuff from that wallet somewhere else. Well, here's a solution in Wyoming. You can actually use a trust company and have the trust create a trust or a Wyoming LLC be the owner of that wallet. And if your clients are Wyoming LLCs, corporations, trusts, partnerships, or individuals, you're again, totally off the radar. Uh, corporate structures, we have series LLCs just like you would have in the Cayman Islands or BVI, meaning that you have a master LLC and you can create little cells underneath for all the little ventures you want to create. One could be a mining rig one, mining rig two, mining rig three, all in the same fund document or, or LLC document. We also have DAOs that we enact, we had the legislation enacted uh, last year for that. Uh, these are forms of LLCs in Wyoming that uh, essentially allow for governance tokens without 
uh, people having shareholder rights. There's other aspects of Wyoming that are kind of neat as well. We have a, the most robust set regulatory sandbox in the United States. Uh, you can get uh, relief from a regulatory agency in Wyoming uh, from a statute that is preventing you from creating jobs and get relief from that statute for two years and then renew it for another year or so. Uh, you can negotiate with local utilities on power, which is a big deal. You don't have to go to a public utility commission. You negotiate one-on-one. -on -one. We have a state crowdfunding statute, uh, much like the ones that the feds have, but this is just for intrastate assets and intrastate uh, um, transactions. You can create your own insurance company and fund it with cryptocurrency in Wyoming. Why? Because we have captive insurance legislation. And if you're in the gaming world, gaming games of chance can be played with cryptocurrency in the state of Wyoming, meaning that if you've got a game that's using crypto, you can put your server and your game and your company and everything else in the state. So the question is, how does my business leverage all of these great things in Wyoming? You know, one of the things that always seems to come up is um, raising money, right? Uh, big deal, how are we raising money? You know, am I going to be a security? Do I have to go register in 50 states? Am I totally precluded from being in the U.S.? So on and so forth. The answer to that is, you know, listen, the regulatory environment we're in is what it is. I can't apologize for it. Uh, the SEC is, and the CFTC are going to do what they're going to do. Hopefully, in my view, the CFTC will take over a lot of this. But until then, um, the best avenue for you all, I believe, if you're going to raise money from the U.S. and the rest of the world, is to raise money from the rest of the world. Use that. Regulation S, we have that in the United States, meaning that you can do an offering of something totally outside the United States, totally off the grid. That's cool. The U.S., of course, is the problem, right? We want to have you know, some of us who uh, want to develop ventures that uh, may not be of the sort that people who are non-accredited would maybe invest in, or maybe they're accredited, but we don't want non-accredited. Anyway, the way to deal with all of these issues and, and I think avoid the crosshairs of the SEC is to have your U.S. offering done strictly within the four borders of the state of Wyoming. Meaning that if you've got meaningful investors, you can have them form a Wyoming LLC, a partnership, or a trust, and they will be deemed Wyoming residents. And they'll get to be able to take advantage of all the great things Wyoming has. Again, these people can custody their things at a trust company. They can borrow, swap, lend using all of Wyoming's lending provisions with safety and, regulatory reg and, and some regularity. And again, there's never, there's never taxes on dispositions and transfers. But I think the most important thing to remember is that Wyoming isn't for everyone, but it's close. Okay? You can still rock in America. You can still do it. You can do it in Wyoming, but your investors or your holders have to have Wyoming entities. And remember I talked about the number 102? 102 is the number, that's the amount of dollars it costs for somebody to form an LLC in the state of Wyoming, a one-person LLC. The decision that you all have, if you're raising money or you're doing business with people and you want to take advantage of this and not get in the crosshairs of FCC, or are the funders and the people that you want to do business with, are these people going to spend $102 to do business with you so you can stay out of trouble? That's my view of it. My view is that if they can't spend $102 on you, why should you be dealing with them? This is the best way to do it. Business plans and marketing concerns if you use Wyoming for raises. If you're going to raise money, yes, there are some things you have to be careful of. A marketing the biggest thing, of course, is you have a, have a website or a checkbox saying, I am a resident of Wyoming or I'm a corporation in Wyoming. You're never exempt from tax, regrettably. And uh, you do have to have some comfort with some of the marketing restrictions. You, you know, there's some things you just can't do. And I know people you know, are very aggressive about wanting to do those things. But in any event, 
I hope this has been a good overview for you of what we have to offer in the state of Wyoming. We are in booth 110 upstairs. Uh, my entire firm is here, actually. Uh, <laughs> that would be Christine, Christy, and Tatiana. They are waving over there. <laughs> We will be here for the duration of the conference. We welcome your questions, we welcome your interest, and we hope to be doing business with you soon. Thank you.